Welcome to a Kaitor Industries tutorial. This is part four of my four part series on creating the ultimate AV Famicom. In this video, I'm going to take you through the final steps, which include installing the IGR board. Uh, this IGR board was originally designed by Borti4938, and the layout has been uh, modified by Voltar. Uh, it's a clever little board that lets us use uh, the reset button and the controller inputs to change the palette settings on the NES RGB, so we don't need to drill any holes in the case. Uh, I really like this. It's a nice clean installation. Uh, the Voltar board even includes this capacitor, so we don't need to move C15 up to the board. Um, so really pretty simple. This video should be pretty quick. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is grab this little row of pins and drop that onto the pallet switch vias uh, onto the NES RGB. Now we can't get to it from this side, so we're going to have to remove the NES RGB and flip it around so we can solder these on. There we go. With the pins now soldered in place and our NES RGB pushed back down into the socket, we can grab our IGR board, lay it down right on top of those rows of pins. Now you'll notice this will just sit here loosely, so we're going to need to hold that as we solder it in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by tacking it with a little bit of solder on just one of the pins and just leave it wet. And then using my fingers, just get that as level and square with the NES RGB as I can. There we go. See, that looks, that looks really good. Now focus on one of the other pins. Give that some solder. There we go. This board is going to need a few different things. Uh, let's start with the power, shall we? 5 volt and 3.3 volt. Let's apply some solder to those pads. We are going to need two wires, so I'm going to use my ribbon cable and just pull those apart. Now of course these are much longer than I actually need, but that's okay, we can cut them down to length as we go. The ends of the wires are tinned, but they are a little bit longer than we like. So let's just 
trim them down. Same with the other wire. Okay. Grabbing our Famicom back. Our 3.3 volt is going to come from this side of this resistor right here. And our 5 volt is going to come from this side of this resistor here. So I'm going to start on the resistor side. Let's zoom back in. Let's add a little bit of fresh solder to that pad. And to the pad where we're going to grab our 3.3 volts. All right, great. Now, as you can see, we do have a little bit of extra wire, so I'm going to cut this guy down. Same with this one. It might be a little tricky to get our strippers along that wire, so we'll do that the old-fashioned way. But for this one, there we go. Lightly squeeze the insulation and use our fingernails to pull it off. There we are. So let's tin these wires. With our power installed, there is a, a jumper we need to short out. Down here you'll see low and high. Uh, we need to short out low for the AV Famicom. Uh, high is for the, uh, uh, the, the front loader. Let's tin the pads for our controller inputs. And for our reset input and output. partially prepared a five conductor ribbon that I've cut from a larger ribbon. Um, what we need to do is split that into a group of three and a group of two. Uh, we can keep the ribbon together for the most part. Let's tin the ends of those wires.
there's an opening in the shield underneath the board, roughly in this region. So that's where we're going to run this ribbon underneath. Just give us a tiny bit of slack. We don't want a lot, but just enough for us to work with without putting strain on the connections. And then coming around to the other side, we need to separate these back off. So looking at this again, we have uh, yellow and orange on our reset and then purple, blue, and green on our controller. So at this point, we do want to start to separate these. So yellow and orange get separated back. And then these will continue on to the controller over here. Let's start with the reset. We are going to connect our reset input right here because that's the bottom side of the reset button. Uh, this trace does have to be cut. Now there's some ambiguity out there on whether or not you can cut this. I have tested it. You have to cut this trace. Even with the capacitor removed, uh, it will not work properly if you don't cut that trace, unfortunately. Uh, so we do have to cut that. And now our orange is going to connect to this via right here. So let's go ahead and chop this bad boy out. go. And our yellow, which is our reset input, is going to land right here. And our orange, which is our reset output, is going to go right up to here. And that's what your end result should look like. Reset out, reset in, cut trace. Now let's move over to the controller inputs. So let's cut this to length right about, right about there. There we go. Split these wires apart. Let's tin these wires. Very good. And move 
move those wires out of the way temporarily so that we can apply some fresh solder right in here. There we are. Great work. Let's button this back up. Bottom half of the shell. Now as we put this in, make sure that your wire is clear. They have to be in the, uh, the cutouts of uh, the shield. go. Make sure there's no undue stress on any of the, the ribbons, the cables. There we go. Just like that. Once we're sure that we have all of our cables and ribbons within the uh, proper areas of the shield and all of our hardware will clear, uh, now we can grab some of our screws that we took apart in the beginning and start fastening the motherboard back down. Fantastic, our motherboard is bolted down and we're ready to install the top half of the shell. And once again, remember, as you're tightening these, turn counterclockwise. Just a few turns until you hear or feel the click. Once that happens, go ahead and tighten it down. And there we go. Our work is done. We've successfully recapped this board, installed a new voltage regulator, did the audio balance restoration mod, installed the NES RGB, and the Voltar IGR. We now have the ultimate AV Famicom. Congratulations, and thank you for watching.